All right, here I'm just going to look to make a more advanced pumpkin. Uh, this is an advanced tutorial, so if you do not have the basic skills, please don't work through this. Uh, if you feel comfortable with some advanced things, then uh, let's go for it here. So, in SketchUp, when you work with small objects, uh, you're going to end up with some errors in forming surfaces. And so what we need to do is work at a much bigger scale, and then we'll scale it down at the end to get what the printing size we want. Now, I find the easiest is to know the size I want in the final result and just multiply everything by 10. And then at the end, I'll divide it by uh, 10 as a final scaling factor. So I can just type in, you can use the scaling tool and type in 0 0.1 and hit enter, and you get the size you want. So uh, what I'm going to do then is make a pumpkin that started off. I want it in the end to be 40 millimeters across. So I'm going to start with a 20 millimeter radius times by 10, 20 times 10, 200. All right. Uh, for a pumpkin, oh, I'm just seeing it now. I forgot. With my circle, having about 12 size is a good number. You can have a bit more or a bit less. So with the circle tool then, right away when you press C for circle or you use the circle tool, you're going to see that the uh, size is showing in the bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to type in 12, hit enter. Now I have the number of sides that I want, so I'm going to start and click dragging along the red axis. As you get more advanced into this, you're going to find that always working along an axis saves you some hassle. I want 20 millimeters, so I'm times it by 10 and type in 200. All right, so I've got a 200 millimeter radius. Um, if you're not sure the units you're working in, be sure to be working in millimeters. So check that at the start. All right, here we go. Next, some advanced skills coming up here. We are going to create a bit of a profile on this. Uh, what we want is a pumpkin with some contour along the edges. And so to do that, I need to put in some arcs. Now, I'm just going to make these all the same. And so to do that, I'm going to make SketchUp know that I'm interested in this line after I've chosen my two points for my arc. Pull out. Once it's purple, I see it. I hold down Shift. It fixes it in that direction, and then I can decide how much contour I want. I'm going to say that's enough. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this all the way around the outside edge of this circle. And so to do that, we can use the tool from down here, or I can just press the letter Q. And that brings up the Rotate tool. Uh, first, let's make sure this surface is selected. So it's dotted. Now I'm going to press Q. I want to rotate around the middle. If I'm going to go to all of these points, I want to do rotation around this middle point. And I want this edge I'm going to click on. As you watch what happens here, I move it over. Oh, let me do that again. I have Q select, surfaces selected. I pressed Q. I choose the center. I choose the point. Then I'm going to press Control once. And that's going to make a copy and move it. Now I want this point to move over to the next section that I want it to be on. So I'm going to click there. And now I can tell SketchUp how many copies I want to do the exact same thing I just did. And so I have one here, and I need a few more. So I'm going to say times 11, and it will go exactly around the circle. And it gives me a great, uh, quickly, a quick way to make this contoured edge around the circle. All right, next. So what we're going to do is we want to follow around this edge. Um, Here's an easy way to do this. I'm just going to erase the middle on all of these. Uh, I'm just going to make this into a surface for myself to, to work with. And then if I click on this edge, it only gives me one of them. So if I triple click, I get all of them highlighted in blue. I'm going to hold down Shift for a second as I can do a plus minus. So this is selecting and deselecting items. I'm going to deselect this surface. And what I'm going to do is right-click on the blue edge. I have to have my mouse over the edge and right-click. And I'm going to weld these edges. So what it's going to do for me is now it's all one piece again. So I don't have to go selecting each piece whenever I want to use them. It's all just one edge, which is really helpful. All right, next step. What we're going to do is make a profile for our pumpkin. And then we're going to do the Follow Me tool around the outside edge. And so to do that, I'm going to use the Line tool. I'm going to go straight up. Remember, use the arrow key. Um, 20 or th 30 millimeters would be good, so let's go 25, but remember I'm working in times 10 scale, so 250. I'm going to choose to make an arc now. 
And I'm working along the red line, so I can actually force that right now. Get a profile that I might like. I don't know, that looks pretty good. I'm just eyeballing it. And then what we're going to do is make a second arc. You can use the offset tool if you want it exactly the same on the inside. So I can use offset here. And I can go inside or outside. It doesn't matter. Um, why don't I go outside for this one? So offset, choose the surface, choose the offset tool, and go outside. If your computer is really sluggish, you're going to have to click and hold. You can't use click, move, click. And I can release. And I want this to be 2 millimeters in the end, so I need to type down 20. Hit enter. Uh, if we wanted a bit thinner, we could. If we wanted to go to 1.2 or 0 0.8 millimeters in the end. So if I wanted to go to 0 0.8 times it by 10, I need this to be 8 millimeters, or 1.2 would be 12. So I'm going to type in 12. Uh, you pick how thick you want your walls to be at the end. Next step, we've got to trim off some of this stuff. But first, we need a line. So I'm going to make a line that goes here using the red arrow straight outwards. And I want to make sure I get it right under that edge. I'm going to do the same at the top because we're just creating a side profile. Now, at the top of a pumpkin, I kind of like it to be sloped. I could go straight out. Or I could choose to go up and maybe meet up with this on the edge, which would give me a nice slope at the end. So let's do that. Then I can erase the rest of these lines. And I'm just working with just a profile that I have here. All right. We're ready for the Follow Me tool. So let's get it prepared. Choose Follow Me and have it ready to go. Select. Uh, something has gone wrong with this section here. I can see it's turned black. So actually, I'm going to go back and select. Select that one. And then right click and choose to weld the edges again. So now I can choose that as all a continuous path. can choose Follow Me. Choose the surface. SketchUp is thinking very hard because there's a lot of intersections going on here. And so it has to do a lot of thinking. Uh, let's see how quickly this takes. I don't know how long this will take. If it takes a long time, I'll edit it out in the final video. It usually only takes another few seconds. I've had it take up to about 30 seconds. So let's see. There it is. All right. And it's going to work out. I can have a nice contoured shape on the outside. And pumpkin looks pretty good. Next. I'm going to triple click this. Um, deselect the bottom, and I want to make this a group so that whatever I change in the bottom doesn't affect all these edges. And so what I'm going to do is triple click to select it, deselect the bottom, hold down shift, and then click on it once. It tricks away the dots. Press G for group. Turned it into a component. This is a really, really good thing to do whenever you're making things groups. Allow other objects not to interact. All right. Uh, I want to add the bottom to this, so I'm going to click outside, click on this bottom. I'm going to offset this so that I can just bring it out to the edge. Probably click and holding if your computer's kind of sluggish. And, and then I want to just erase that inner line there, so I'll just erase it. No, nope, didn't want to do that. Didn't want to do that. I want that inner line. Can I get it? If not, it's not a big deal. But I would like to remove it. Uh, let's just move this sideways a little bit so I can have a look. Yeah. I'm just going to take it out of the way for a second. I really want to get rid of this line in here. Um, oh, when I did the offset, it got rid of all of it. Fun. So that's going to take a lot of work to collect all of those pieces. We can just do two push pulls. So I'm going to go back. Probably the easier than removing all that. So I'm going to push pull this part up 1.2 millimeters or two, whatever you want the thickness of. Oh, not 1.2. We're working in times 10 here, aren't we? So let's go up 12. And I'm going to do the same with the outside edge. Oh, I forgot to hold down control. So when you're push pulling, remember to use control in order to add a bottom surface. So 12 millimeters upwards. Same with this next one out here. Make sure it has the plus sign. Go up. Type in 12 and hit enter. So now I've got a surface to my 
pumpkin. And everything's starting to look pretty good. Uh, next. Uh, I could turn that into a group. Let's just do that so that I have things separate and ready to go. So my base is now a separate entity. Uh, let's make the top for this. So I need to go into the pumpkin top here on, so that I can double click on it to get into editing that group. I'm going to click on the edge to select it and copy it. And then let's go out away from the pumpkin and make sure you click on the outside somewhere so it doesn't have this selected anymore. Paste. So I've got that edge precisely. And so to turn this in into a solid is I'm just going to click and make lines across the top. Actually, let's do the bottom first. Then I don't have to rotate around. Do the bottom. Make a line that goes across the top. And I can erase that if I want or leave it, whatever I feel like. And now I've got the top. Now the one thing I should do with this is uh, select it all, turn it into a group, and let's scale it uh, down just a tiny bit. So I like to do that around the center, but you don't have to. Just click and type in maybe 0 0.98, making it just a tiny bit smaller, 98% of what this one is so that it will fit into the hole and not kind of stick up a little bit above the, the top of the pumpkin. Uh, a couple other things we could do if we're interested. We could take our circle tool, make a bit of a circle in the middle here, push pull that up, scale that down, maybe around the center, and I could maybe even move that off to the side a little bit to make it kind of look more like a pumpkin with the handle on the top. And if you'd like a curved, tapered top, that's a whole different sort of um, skill set that we would have to go through. But uh, for now, this is a good pumpkin this should give you a good result the last step then would be to select all of it scale all of it and bring it down timesing it by 0 0.1 and now we should have a pumpkin that has sort of all the characteristics we're looking for we should have a rough diameter on the inside let's check it uh, let's use the dimension tool point to point 40 millimeters nice uh, wall thickness, let's check it out from point to point, 0 0.2, that's what we're looking for. Thickness here then would be probably, uh, if I went straight up, what is that thickness going to be? Let's pull that out, 0 0.89, 0 0.8, that'll work, I'll, that'll print, it might be a little bit flimsy. And so you could go back and maybe make this a little bit taller uh, on your profile. Um, there's things you could adjust that way, but... So there's your basics for making a pumpkin that has some sort of a, a bit of an indented profile on the outside. All right.